Hey everybody, so today I'm going to be doing this scene breakdown on how I made one of my most recent renders. Uh, this is this really cool sci-fi nature scene that I made. Uh, this is going to go over all the steps on how I put it together, the lighting, the composition, assets, modeling, kind of just everything. Just going to be a breakdown on how I made this scene. So hopefully you learned something in this tutorial and you can apply it to your own creations. So if we go ahead and open this up, I've gone ahead and I've hidden everything so far in this project just so we can kind of see what we started with. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn on this. So what I did initially was I started out with this orb in the center. I wanted to kind of combine some sci-fi and nature elements together. So I was trying to think of some sort of cool model kind of structure that I could put in to be the focal point, the subject of the scene. Uh, and so that started out just with this sphere. And then I made these rings. Um, a quick cool tip is if you have the loop tool add-ons installed, you can go ahead and you can add in the cylinders. And what you can do is if you go into edit mode and if you go to face select and you select the top and the bottom faces and then you hit I to inset, you can go ahead and inset these faces, hit X, hit delete faces. And then if you go to edge select and you select both of these edges on the inside by holding down alt and shift. And then if you right click and go loop tools and bridge, this will make a ring that you can then edit and you can scale down. So that's how I went and I made these rings for this structure. We're going to go ahead and delete that. So that's what I did initially with this modeling. And then for this texture, what I did is this is just a degraded metal texture. I can't remember exactly where I got this from. I think it was from like CC0 Textures or Polyhaven. I can't quite remember. But what I did was I put in into the emission, I put in this color ramp with this Voronoi texture and a noise texture. And what this does is this adds this really cool emission that you can play with the scale or the color ramp to make it look a little bit more sci-fi. So once I had this all done and put together, I went ahead and started making the ground. And for the ground, what I did for this was I just took a plane and then scaled it up. And then I subdivided it a bunch of times. And then to give the displacement on it, what I did was I went into the sculpt mode and I just used this clay stripes tool. And what this lets you do is this just lets you draw in kind of clay pieces all over it. And this is how I go about making most of the ground for my scenes, just to give it a little bit of displacement and some variation. And this also lets you have control over what it looks like as opposed to using a displacement modifier. So that's my recommendation for doing the ground. It lets you fine tune exactly how it's gonna look. So that was the base ground and the orb. And then the next thing that I did was I added in just another plane that I put this water shader on because I wanted some water to get some nice reflections off of this cool object and so what i did with that was i just scaled it up to make it about as big as my ground plane and then if you just bring it down a little bit what you can do is you can kind of make these pawns and wherever you want them to be and then if you go back to your ground and go back into sculpt mode you can use this crease tool and what this will let you do is this will let you cut out the ground in spots you can kind of sculpt in wherever you would want the water to be so once i had the water in the ground and the subject done the next thing that I usually do is I kind of set up my camera angle and how everything's going to look. So I went ahead and set up my camera and I put in this little guy. I like to put in this model of a person in most of the scenes that I make just to help for scaling purposes because then you can see how big this looks in relation to a human and kind of model everything off of one object so the scale is consistent across the scene. And then what the other things that I did was I added in this really horrible looking uh, background uh, cube that I then just sculpted with the clay stripes again. The reason I did this was because I wanted the horizontal plane to be a little higher than just right below because if we hide this, you can see how low this is. And I wanted it to go up just a little more because when we add in some of our assets later, uh, this just helps fill out that area so you don't get any of the background, the sky down that low because I didn't feel like that looked the most realistic. And then for the background, I just imported an image from Unsplashed as a plane. And I like to do this for uh, any of my scenes where you're going to be able to see the sky because this just helps it look a little bit more realistic than doing what I personally have the capabilities right now in Blender to create. So that's just a quick little tip on how to get better looking skies in Blender. And then the next thing that I did was I always like to add in just a smidge of volumetrics into my scenes because I feel like it helps provide some atmosphere and sort of helps break up the lighting and it especially looks cool with emissions and lights because it helps give some more texture 
and ambiance to your scene. So that's what this cube is. I just scaled it up to fit my whole scene. Uh, a good tip to do with any of these fog cubes that I make is to click on the object data properties and go to visibility and display is bounds down here in the viewport display. This will make it so it doesn't just take up your whole scene. You can still see and work with what is inside of it. For this shader, what I did was I just deleted the default shader and I plugged in a volume scatter into the volume and I just used just the tiniest amount of density because I didn't want that much in my scene, but I still wanted some. So now that everything was kind of set up and ready to go, I needed to start adding in the nature elements into the scene. The first thing that I wanted to do was I wanted to make this look overgrown and kind of like it, this structure has been here for a while. And how I did that was I used this really cool ivy generator. Uh, it's kind of an add-on, but it's more of a geometry nodes um, node tree that you can add in and append to your project. Uh, I'll link it down below in the description to the Gumroad. And what this lets you do is it lets you apply ivy to a collection. And so what you do with this is you create a new object. So if you just go and just create a new cube, we can scale this up just so we can see this. And then you go to your modifiers and you go to geometry nodes. This is after you append the geometry node seed into your scene. And then what this will do is this will create an IV spot that you can then go to a target collection. And for that, I have this orb collection. And what this will do is this will let you have IV that'll move around your scene. And then you can play with the density. You could play all this. You could scale it up or down. And so this is what I did to create this IV. Um, this is one of my favorite things that I found to use in Blender, and I would highly recommend you getting it. Um, again, I'll link it down below in the description. So once this, this looked overgrown, the next thing that I did was I wanted to fill out the foreground a little bit. And so what I did with that is framing tree. I always like to put in some trees in the front to kind of frame it. It helps uh, add some depth to the scene. So you have some pieces in the foreground along with the background. And then I went through and I hand placed a bunch of rocks around the water area and in the foreground as well. Uh, I like to hand place some assets in my scene and also scatter a lot of them. I feel like hand placing just lets you get things exactly where you want, like with these foreground rocks and with these rocks around the riverbed, because I wanted some to be kind of in the water and around. It just gives some more depth to everything and how everything looks so far. And now the last little bit, um, this is the bulk of this scene that kind of fills this out and helps it look. Like the final one is if you go to this ground within the botanic add-on, there's a cool scattering feature. And I have all these different scatter sets that I made and then applied it to this plane. So with the trees, we'll go ahead and make this visible. I just added in some trees because I wanted this to look like a forest clearing. Um, what you can do with this, which I really, really like, because it helps save your computer viewport rendering time. And also it helps uh, bring down the bulk of your scene is within the scattering feature in Botanic, there's this section where you can control how many are displayed out of your total number. And then you can also change it from textured to bounds. And when you change it to bounds, I've noticed that it improves my viewport performance dramatically. Uh, but what I did with this was I created the scene that I wanted and picked all the different trees. And then what you can do is you can go ahead and hit this little paintbrush and this will let you weight paint where you want it to be. And I wanted this to look like a clearing. So I went around on my ground and just wait and painted it where I wanted everything to be. So that's how I did the trees. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make this bounds again, just so this some, some rendering power in my viewport. So then I went ahead and I added in all of this grass around the scene. As you can see on the left hand side here, this is um, one that has some flowers in it. This is just to cover up the ground, I feel like. This helps make the scene look more realistic and it helps the ground texture look more believable because it adds more depth and variation to that. Um, go ahead and make this bounds once again. And then I also added in some sticks, which these are all pretty light, but I just added this around where the grass is way painted in as well. Uh, just to add in a little bit more variation. These aren't the most noticeable, but I feel like the ones that you do notice, it helps add a little bit difference to that. And then I also went ahead and I added in more rocks around the water. I just weight painted around the water where I wanted them to be around the edges because 
I feel like a lot of ponds and streams and uh, water elements in real life, they usually have a lot of rocks surrounding them. So I wanted to add in a little bit more with that. And then the last section that I added in was these uh, additional shrubs uh, just to add just a smidge more depth than just the grass was providing. So that's basically it with the whole scene. Uh, it's a lot of botanic. Um, you can do this with any scattering or sort of plant or vegetation assets that you have yourself. Um, this is just the add-on that I like to do. It's my favorite add-on that I have so far for Blender. Um, so now that all the modeling's done, uh, the kind of final steps that I did before I go over the compositing that I did for this scene is I like to export just a 32 sample test render whenever I get pretty close to being done with my scene and then set up the compositing. I find that you don't really need the highest of quality. And since this is a test, uh, I just like to do this low sample amount for that. Um, the only other thing that I enabled is in the render layers. I enabled the mist layer. Uh, I like adding this in because it allows you to add in some more volumetric lighting to pace. Uh, the mist pass, I feel like, is very strong and it's good to use in the compositing. So I'm going to go ahead and export this test render and then we can go over the compositing settings that I used. All right, so now that we have this test render exported, uh, what I'm going to go over is first I went down into color management and I turned the color look up to medium high contrast and then I did all of this in the compositing. The first thing that I did was I took this mist layer, which we can go ahead and view that. And what I did first was I put it through a denoiser because it's pretty noisy initially. So then that clears up that noise. And then the next thing that you do is you want to add this back into the original scenes. So I do this by plugging in the mix denoise into the factor of the mix RGB and changing this to add. And then in this bottom image, you can select a color and the top image you can plug in your original one. And this will add in that mist layer into this scene with that color. And then what I like to do after that is because this is pretty strong is to put in another mix RGB node and plug the add into the bottom and the original image into the top. And this will let you fine tune the amount of that mist layer that you're adding in. So I have it down really, really low because I just wanted a little bit. If we turn this to zero, you can see all of it going away. If you turn it up to one, it looks like this add. So I just turned it down super low. Let's do 0.05 again. So we can see, and that just fills out this back area a little bit. And I feel like it adds some more depth to the scene. The next thing that I like to do is I like to almost always add in fog glow into my compositing, especially with this one, because of how there are lights in this scene. So you can go ahead and see, I just have the fog glow set to medium. The mix and the threshold are just set to the default values. If we go ahead and we hit M, we can mute that. And we can see the difference. What this does is it's basically lets you have a sort of EV bloom effect uh, in cycles. And so that's why I like to add this in. And then once again, I mix this into the original image because I don't like how much there is. And this factor lets you control, once again, how much you add in. So zero is not is all of it. And one is zero this time just because of the way that I have these plugged into. So I want to just a smidge. So we'll go back to that. And then the last node that I like to add in is this color balance node. Uh, I add this in almost to all of my renders. I feel like this really helps with the contrast and also kind of the way that the lighting looks and the colors that it focuses on. So I always change it to offset power and slope. And then for this one, I brought the power just a little bit down into the yellow and boosted it a little bit. And then I brought the slope up to a light blue and boosted it a little bit. So if we go ahead and we mute this, we can see the difference that this is doing. It's a little warm in this one, and all this is doing is just making it a little cooler, and I feel like it's balancing out the colors a little more. So once that was all done, you just plug this into the composite, and you're done with the compositing. You can go back to the layout. And then for my final settings, I did 1,000 for the samples. And then this is 1080 by 1350 because I made this to be posted on socials, and then I just boosted this up to 300%. So it's a higher resolution. I find that this helps a lot with my scenes to up the quality. And since this is a still and not an animation, I am not too pressed on the amount of time that this takes to export, uh, purely because I don't mind waiting around for 30 minutes or so for this scene to export just because it's a still. So that's basically it for everything that I did inside of Blender. Um, after this was done, I put this image into Photoshop and did 
some Photoshop editing to this. If you don't do that with your render images, I would really highly recommend it. I'm going to be making a tutorial sometime in the future on the Photoshop kind of tricks and tips and how I like to edit my renders after that because I feel like it really helps take them to the next level. So yeah, that's a quick breakdown on how I made uh, this Lost Ark render. I hope that you learned something. If you have any questions, um, I'll try to answer them, leave them down below. And thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.